Hello guys, I am Flash Isaac and today I'll be taking you through Newton's laws and equations of motion. Now, we know about Newton's three laws of motions and we know about the equations of motion. How does Newton's law and equations of motion relate? How do we derive the equations of motion? And what are the laws of motion? This is what we are going to achieve today. Now, equations of motion simply tells us or simply explains or describes velocity, displacement and acceleration with time. So how those variables behave with time. The laws of motion tells us how bodies and other physical forces around affect objects. So with the law of motion, you'll be able to derive uh, free body diagrams and also arrive at the equations of motion. Now, let me begin with the laws of motion. The first law of motion states that a body at rest will continue to be at rest. And if it is in motion, it will continue in motion, uniform motion in a straight line, unless it is acted upon by a force so forces are agents that causes motion and is it not true yes as this thing is resting now it will continue to be there until you disturb it a force is acting on it and if you are launching a, a rocket to the moon for example it continues to go it bypasses gravity of earth until it goes to the moon probably and encounter some forces, it can begin to change direction or stop. A rolling ball will continue to roll until it experiences a force that will stop it. So all objects have inertia. Inertia is the reluctance of a body to move when at rest based on its mass or its reluctance to stop if it's already in motion. The first law of motion, Newton's first law, is most times regarded as the law of inertia. And for the second law, the second law states that the change of momentum of a body with time is directly proportional to the force applied and takes place in the direction of the force. Look at it. Momentum of a body is simply mass times velocity, which is mv. And we have v for final velocity and u for initial velocity. In that case, in the, uh, initial momentum will simply be mass times initial velocity. Final momentum will simply be mass times final velocity. Now, what will be the change of momentum? Change of momentum will simply be initial uh, final momentum minus initial momentum. This is change of momentum which would be m v minus u. Now, how about the rate of change of momentum? Rate of change simply means it's changing with time. So the rate of change of momentum, rate of change of momentum is simply m v minus u over t time. So Newton says that the rate of change of momentum of a body is proportional to the force applied and takes place in the direction of the force. So Newton is the unit of force, which means there is a constant here. For this const uh, for us to arrive at Newton or get what we want, the constant needs to be equal to 1, which makes change in momentum is equal to m v minus u all over t. So f is equal to m v minus u over t now what is acceleration acceleration is simply change in velocity with time or the rate of change in velocity so acceleration is equals change in velocity is final velocity minus initial velocity if i say that you've changed it means u of before is different from u of now so is that difference we need 
acceleration is simply v minus u over time this is acceleration now look at something v minus u over time is acceleration v minus u over time this means force is equal ma from the first law of motion we are able to derive that uh, pardon uh, from the newton's second law we are able to get force is equal ma so why the first law is referred to as law of inertia we can call the second law law of momentum force is equal mass times acceleration now what happens force is needed for a body to move this second law of motion further simplifies the first law or tells us about the first law because if force is zero there will not be acceleration yes of course mass can't be zero if not if his mass is zero then we are talking we are not talking about body for us to talk about body or objects mass is obviously not zero okay so if force is zero acceleration is zero so force is requires for a body to move now looking at this remember acceleration is equals change in velocity over time if we cross multiply a t will be equals v minus u v will simply be equals u plus a t and this is the first equation of motion so the first equation of motion is v is equals u plus a t if v is equals u plus a t now look at it we said that uh, in physics t is equals time right uh, acceleration is equals change in velocity over time then what about uh, velocity velocity itself is equals change in displacement over time that means over time displacement is actually a distance covered in a specified direction this implies that if velocity is change in displacement over time so v is equals uh, displacement over time it therefore means that displacement or s is equals velocity times time so how about average displacement if displacement uh, our average displacement will simply be average velocity times time what is average if we have a and b the average is simply a plus b over 2 similarly average displacement is simply a, a average velocity velocity is in two form initial and final velocity so average velocity will simply be v plus u over 2 times time already this is t now having this you can take this as another equation v is equals u plus a t so substituting this value of v into this s becomes u plus v is u plus a t u plus a t over 2 t s is equals 2 u plus a t over 2 times t and this is the same thing as s is equals 2 u over 2 plus a t over 2 or times t now what does this give you s is equals 2 u divided by 2 is simply u u plus half a t or times t s will simply be equals u times t is u t plus half times half a t times t is half a t squared so this is the second equation of motion the second equation of motion is simply s is equals u t plus half a t squared and the first equation is v is equals u plus a t now the third 
law. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal or opposite reaction. For every force, you get an equal force. If I should push this, I get a reaction that is equal to the force I'm applying. Even for a body, if I should put a block here, the weight goes down. Weight is mass times acceleration due to gravity. There is a reaction which is upward. So reaction is equal and opposite. If I hit a ball on the wall with a velocity, let's say V is equal to 2 meters per second, the ball will, will rebound with a velocity that is equal but opposite, minus 2 meters per second. So in this case, the reaction is equal to the action and opposite. Take a look at gun, for example. If you are given a gun or a rifle, this is the trigger. So once you move, uh, pull the trigger, the velocity, the bullet moves with the same velocity that the gun is moving with. So the bullet goes forward, the required velocity backward is equal and opposite. In that case, the momentum is equal to the mass of gun times velocity of recoil or of gun is equal to the mass of bullet times the velocity of bullet. So momentum is conserved. How? Uh, let's look at how to derive the third equation of motion. Looking at this from here, we have that S is equals V plus U over 2. Now, from first law, V is equals U plus AT. If V is equals U plus AT, then T is equals V minus U over A. So that means S is equals V plus U over 2. T is now V minus U over A. So V minus U over A. So S simply gives you V square minus UV plus UV minus U square all over 2A. Minus UV plus UV is minus 2UV. So S is equals uh, V square minus UV. This will give you 0. Minus UV plus UV is 0. So minus U square over 2A. So 2AS is equals V square minus U square. So therefore, V square is equals U square plus 2AS. So this is the third equation of motion. And from here, we know that here is change in uh, velocity. So change in V square is equals 2AS. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for calculations under motion and under equations of motion. Let's see the applications and let's see everything that you need to know. Thank you.